This is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and I am going to be covering a game from round two of the 2011 U.S. Championship between Larry Christensen and Yasser Sirawan. So two um, two experienced pros on the U.S. chess scene, and um, this was a pretty quick game. Christensen appears to be playing in top form in this tournament, and uh, I think Sirawan just... <coughs> I think he made an early blunder and uh, was was duly punished by Christensen. So the Carol Khan here, and this is the advanced variation with e5. And Botvinnik used to play an immediate c5 here. It's, an, it's another line, but these days it's more topical to play bishop f5. And now this knight f3 variation is becoming very popular as well, because it uh, you know the Carol Khan used to with Capablanca back in the 30s. It used to be known as as a pretty drawish opening, you know, Capablanca could play it and get a draw with anybody easily. But recently, in the last couple of years, it's becoming very double-edged opening. You see some crazy games with Hikaru Nakamura playing the black side, and this knight f3 and bishop e2 line seems to be uh, the theory is not so well established. So still seeing some good games, and queen b6, an early queen b6, trying to you know it's similar to the French, but this bishop gets outside of the pawn chain so sometimes it can be better and uh, queen b6 just it's hard to you know it's an attentive move it's hard to defend that b2 pawn but uh, why not just sacrifice it so that's what Christensen does and now queen b1 and uh, the idea is queen takes e3 and now queen a3 would be the only move queen takes b7 and that rook on a8 is going to drop so that's the idea behind queen b1 and so you know, obviously, queen takes c3 doesn't work. And so the only other options... Really, I, I think Sirwan blundered here with queen takes b2. Well, no, I know. Queen takes b2 is okay, but he, he you can't... Queen a3 just maybe doesn't work to castles. And now, how do you defend this pawn on b7? And white is going to get a lot of activity so maybe I, I don't know I don't want to go too deeply into this but it just seems like white can play knight b5 hitting the queen and also c7 and take on c5 and get a super very strong knight on d6 so it seems to me in this position after queen b1 queen takes b1 and rook takes b1 was essentially forced and this seems maybe it's okay for black but the problem is white's gonna have some very nasty checks coming on this this uh, b5 square if he gets to t you know maybe b6 here but I mean this you don't really want to get into this game as black pawn takes possibly and say maybe bishop takes pawn and rook b7 bishop b5 to come something along those lines playing c4 is just this is very ugly White is just getting a huge advantage and a huge initiative for sacking one pawn. So I don't I don't think this was a very good opening by Sir One. Taking on B2, I just don't like it. And so he took on C2 with the Queen, and I think here it's just already over. In eight moves, he's it's already lost. Queen takes C2, obviously the idea would be if uh, Queen takes B7, now taking on C3 and picking up the Rook on A1. So that's not going to quite work. But Queen B5 check would seem to situate, you know, work work it out. That white gets the queen out, he doesn't have to trade queens anymore, and rook c1 to come. Completing development at the cost of two pawns, yes, but, um, I mean, white is just getting a monster attack here. And black's queen is very awkward position. So I, I think it's just lost now in, in only eight moves. And zero on me is 2,600. The guy's no joke, so. Rook c1 and a6. So Sir Juan, it seems like they're both playing like this is preparation. Like they're playing almost immediately with taking no time off the clock, which I find is very strange that Sir Juan would, would walk into this line. I, I don't know. So after a6, maybe he, you know, I, I don't know what happened here. So a6 and um, after queen takes b7, saw rook. Whoa. A little problem with the internet. So after after queen takes b7, rook b8, and queen takes a6, now the pawn count is exactly even. Material is even. Black has misplaced this queen on c2, and his king is very 
very open to attack, and White has essentially completed all of his development. So White is absolutely killing the opening here. And Sierra One, it, it still shows he's moving fast. I don't know. Maybe I've got maybe I've got a glitch in the the version of the game I'm looking at. And so Bishop B5, and I wanted to get that Bishop out before Black played C4. And also, obviously, is starting to put together a very nice attack on, on Black's position. Also, Black now can't retreat with his queen. Now c4. He wants to close the position. White was just threatening to take on c5 and push his pawn. So Black is lost here. And after castles, just get the king out of the center. Queen a3, trying to trade queens. If you're getting attacked, you always want to trade pieces. So, you know, trade queens, or maybe the queen can come back on this diagonal and defend. Sir, uh, Christensen just simply bishop a4. Is not not going to trade queens here, no way. And after bishop e7, knight b5, and this is uh, looking worse every minute for black. So, seems like knight b5 and queen b2. It's tough to offer any advice. <coughs> If um, Queen d4, I don't think it's different really. And now Bishop d2, just uh, threatening. Seems like Bishop Bishop c3 and maybe winning the Black Queen, something along those lines. And Bishop e4, Bishop c3, and now Queen e2, Rook e1, and Bishop takes. So Black has sacrificed a Queen for a pawn. Not a, not even a pawn, a, a rook and a knight, which is not so good. But he does have a protected pass pawn on c4. So if he can consolidate, and if he doesn't get mated, which is going to be kind of tough because his king can't really get out of the center, maybe he's going to be okay in the end game, but pro probably not. And after knight d6 and queen takes, and now rook b7, yeah, I, th I think the game's already lost. I mean, if rook d8 and bishop a5 is just going to seal the deal. So after rook b7, bishop c6, and in 23 moves, Yasser Sirwan resigns. Larry Christensen played a good game, and I, I think that, that Sirwan just blundered on, on like the 8th or the ninth move. Um, so here, yeah, I mean, he, he resigned because if there's no way to defend the knight, and if rook a7, the simple queen, queen b8 check, <coughs> and this actually leads to mate. After bishop b4. Yikes. So, great game by Christensen. A fantastic start in the 2011 U.S. Championship with 2-0 and so far. And uh, this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net. And thanks for tuning in.